Hello, we're back uh, with our reading of What is Philosophy by Gilles Deleuze and Felix Gattari, translated by Graham Birchall and Hugh Tomlinson. So, when you're reading Deleuze and Gattari, um, it is not an analytical experience of reading, so it takes patience. I can understand that some readers um, become irritated by the tendency to um, progress without the typical form of demonstration, analytic demonstration, right? So it might seem that they are often um, claiming without uh, backing up with evidence. But I think that the, the coherence, the reward and the inspiration of such a reading comes uh, one once we've reached the end and we reread the book. So at the moment we are discovering the book and we're discovering that concepts are a very strange type of entity for them. And for example, they call it a point of coincidence, condensation or accumulation of its own components. So this is connected to um, a metaphor that they have of a state of survey and the French term is survol and this is a reference to uh, uh, Raymond Royer who was a less known philosopher of the 60s who spoke of consciousness as um, overview uh, in terms that suggest that of course the concept is as they write an incorporeal but at the same time it is incarnated or effectuated in bodies so that sounds almost contradictory unless there is a movement not only from the incorporeal to the real, but also from the real to the incorporeal. And an intuition we might have at this point of the reading is that, well, it is not only the concept that performs an action upon the world, it is also the conceptual character the carrier of the concept, the philosopher, that also uh, performs a form of disembodiment. Let's go slowly and continue our reading um, as the pages present themselves quite mysteriously. For example, they agree or they admit that the, the concept is an act of thought, which is a sort of a traditional definition. But then they had, it is, this is done at infinite speed. What does that mean, infinite speed? Does it have to do with uh, the, um, opposition between the finite, the discrete, and the um, continuous, we will see. Another paradox, they say, is that the concept is self-referential. And um, here, they add that the relative and the absolute are united in the concept. 
Again, this sounds quite Hegelian and we will need to understand how this is possible. Concepts are centers of vibrations. Um, philosophy extracts concepts which must not be confused with general or abstract ideas whereas science extracts prospects, propositions that must not, be con must not be confused with judgments. And art extracts percepts and affects, which must not be confused with perceptions or feelings. So this is a three modes of um, uh, creation of different uh, human spheres so for them the concept is really the sphere of philosophy and they give an example which is Descartes cogito so to um, be able to explain the cogito or to to, to unfold it um, there are three moments there is the moment of doubting that is often forgotten it is because I can doubt of everything but not of the fact that I am doubting that emerges the second moment which is the moment of thinking and the third moment is the moment of being because if I am thinking I am doing something I am Right, and they have this um, diagram that looks like uh, the head of an insect uh, for the um, concept of cogito. Uh, and this is, for example, to exemplify that if you change one param parameter, uh, you change the concept. For example, Let's admit uh, that um, instead of having a systematic doubt and therefore um, edifying the philosophy upon um, a ground that is like a black hole, basically the black hole of nihilism perhaps, we could try to build philosophy on the ground of faith, right? We could imagine a cogito that would have, instead of doubting as a first, as, as, as an element, as one of the three elements, components, we could have faith. I have faith in everything or in something and therefore and this is what Whitehead does when he insists on the concept of importance he's trying to see what what, what connects all forms of living beings even those who, which have a very minimal form of consciousness and he says well they all have this um, sense of some things that are more important than others therefore they have the concept of importance right which might might or might not be grounded on uh, the idea of survival for a human being what is important is not necessarily what um, is um, good for the survival Uh, they have this digression and they say well actually digressions are important in philosophy they have this digression against the idea of debate democratic debate discussion they say philosophy has a horror of discussions and concepts are not about trying to find consensus 
but of course, uh, then the reader, the first objection that might come to the mind of the reader is Socrates. And they actually, of course, admit that objection. In Socrates, was philosophy not a free discussion among friends? Is it not, as the conversation of free men, the summit of Greek sociability? Well, in fact, Socrates, they write, constantly made all discussion impossible, both in the short form of the contest of questions and answers and the long, in the long form of a rivalry between discourses. He turned the friend into the friend of the single concept and the concept into the pitiless monologue that eliminates the rivals one by one. And we must understand that elimination of rivalry not as something that happens in real life, right? Otherwise it would be debate, but as an internal monologue, in fact. Probably Plato's internal monologue. So the concept in the mind of the philosopher is a sort of um, milestone or philosopher's stone or, 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 or some something that they must um, hold on to as they constantly contradict themselves, as the agony of thought deploys itself into their body. And the concept slowly, the, 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 the concept that is embodied by the given philosopher, which might be composed by um, several quasi concepts, well, that concept is, uh, in fact, the axis that remains after the battles that emerges from the internal battles. That's it for today. We continue tomorrow. As usual, we keep every session around 10 minutes.